So let's say you're tasked with finding the total Q1 revenue at Subway franchises. Looks easy, right? We have all of our data here on the left in this table, and all we should have to do is write a simple sum ifs, where the revenue column is our sum range and our one criteria is that the franchise is Subway. But we get zero here. And the reason is because none of these franchise names are an exact match for Subway. So how do we solve this problem? That's the topic for today's video, wildcard characters. Wildcard characters can represent any character in Excel, and they're generally used to search for text within cells. And there are three different wildcard characters in Excel. First is the asterisk, which represents zero or more characters. Second is the question mark, which represents exactly one character. And finally, we have the tilde, which tells Excel to treat wildcard characters as normal text. Now we're ready to revisit our example. And all we have to do is make a very small change to our sum ifs criteria here. So rather than only picking up exact matches, let's take the sum of revenue for all franchises where Subway is found anywhere within our entire franchise name over here. And we can use our asterisk wildcard character to do this. So within the quotation marks, we can add an asterisk before Subway, meaning zero or more of any characters found before Subway. And then again, within the quotation marks, another asterisk after Subway. So zero or more of any characters found after Subway. Hit enter, and now we get our correct total. And notice that this is picking up occurrences where the franchise name starts or ends with Subway, like here as well as examples where Subway is in the middle of the name, like here. And this will also pick up exact matches. So if we add a franchise at the bottom that is exactly called Subway with $10,000 in revenue, our total will update accordingly. Using the same data as before, let's now fill in these yellow cells with a copyable formula. So number of franchises means the count. So we can use the count ifs function the criteria range is the entire franchise column. And for the criteria, to make this copyable, we want to use cell references to our restaurant name on the left. And to add in our wildcard characters, we can do some simple text concatenation. So we can put our asterisks and quotation marks, use the ampersand to concatenate text, and then next we want to add in the cell reference to the restaurant, and then another ampersand to concatenate a second asterisk on the end, again in quotation marks close parentheses, hit enter, and we get our answer. And now we can go ahead and drag this down to get the number of franchises for each of the restaurants on the left. Wildcard characters are also supported by my favorite function in Excel, XLOOKUP. So let's say we wanna look up the year-to-date order quantity for our former restaurant account. And in real life, this table could very well be thousands of accounts long. And in our company's database, we aren't exactly sure what forma is actually referred to as. It could be forma, it could be forma restaurant, it could be forma grill, it could be forma kitchen. We aren't exactly sure, but what we do know is that the text forma will be found within the account name. So let's write our X lookup. And for the lookup value, here's where we're gonna use our wildcard characters. So let's concatenate our asterisk to our forma text cell, followed by another asterisk. Our lookup array will be the account column and our return array will be the order quantity column. If not found, let's return none. And for the match mode, you need to select two for a wildcard character match. Otherwise, the default will be an exact match. Close parentheses, hit enter, and we get our answer of eight. Now, a couple quick notes here is first of all, like sum ifs, count ifs, average ifs, all of those functions, this is case insensitive. So we can change this to forma in all caps and it works forma in all lowercase it works, any combination of case will still pick up our response. Secondly, is X lookup here is only going to return one single value. So if forma is actually a chain restaurant and we have more than one forma account, let's say we have forma restaurant with three year-to-date orders, this is still only gonna return this one value and which value it returns is dictated by the search mode. So the default is first to last. So it's gonna return the first value in the table. Let's say we wanna return the second one. We can select negative one for searching last to first. Hit enter and now we get three. If we wanna show data for all of our former restaurant accounts, 
we can perform a filter with wildcard characters. So go to our account column header and click on the dropdown. And within our search bar, let's now specify our criteria. So this can take wildcard characters. So we'll type in an asterisk, forma, and this is case insensitive. So any combination of case will still work. Another asterisk, hit okay. And now we have filtered our table down to only our two former restaurant accounts. We don't always want an asterisk on both sides of our search criteria. And this is an example of that. So let's only show names from the Madison family in our table here on the left. So click on the drop down in the column header and in the search bar, we'll type in an asterisk, Madison. And now if we add another asterisk at the end, you can see we pick up this false positive here where Madison is the first name, but not the last name. So we wanna delete that asterisk to ensure that Madison is the last name only. Hit okay, and we have now filtered our table. Next, let's look at an example of the question mark wildcard character to solve this problem. Now, we know that every single ID will start with two letters, followed by a dash, followed by four digits if the customer is a premium subscriber or eight digits if they are not. So for example, this first ID here is a non-premium subscriber, while these two here are premium subscribers. So to solve this problem, let's use the average ifs function the average range is the order total column. Our criteria range is the customer ID column. And the criteria is as follows. So open quotation marks. And we know the ID starts with two of any letter. So we want to add two question marks. Then it's followed by a dash. And then we want four digits, not eight, because we want premium subscribers only. So we'll add in one, two, three, four question marks, close quotation marks, close parentheses, hit enter, and there is our average order total. New orders have come in and we've re-queried this data. But since we wrote this formula, our customer ID format has changed. Previously, we knew that there were two letters in front of the dash for every single customer ID. Now there could be two or three letters like here. So we need to rewrite our average ifs criteria to account for this change. So let's delete our two question marks here. And now, so we're accounting for any number of possible characters before our dash. Rather than using the question marks, let's use an asterisk. And now our formula is correct. So this just goes to show it's very important to understand the nuances of your company's data, because otherwise you can make some mistakes. Now let's find the number of Jason Bourne movies we have in this movies table. So this is just a simple count ifs where the movie column is our criteria range and our criteria is born with asterisks on either side. And we get three movies. However, if we scroll down in our table here, you can see we actually have five born movies. And the reason we're missing a couple of them is that we have typos. So in this movie title here, we have an O in place of the U. And in this one down here, we have an A in place of the U. So we can go back into our formula and actually account for these typos. And all we have to do is replace our U with a question mark to represent any possible character. Hit enter, and now we get the correct value of five. And there's actually a really cool built-in way to fix these typos in Excel. So you can hit Control F to pull up Find and Replace, click on Replace, and in the Find What search bar, this accepts wildcard characters. So we can type in that same pattern that we used in the formula. So B O question mark R N E. And we want to replace that with the correct spelling of born. And quick note here in the find what bar, this is case insensitive unless you make any changes to the settings under options here. So now we can click on replace all hit. Okay. Close out of this menu. And you can see that all of our typos have been fixed. Next, let's revisit our orders data to take a look at our last wildcard character, the tilde. I've replaced all of the dashes in the customer IDs with question marks, which is a wildcard character. So we need to adjust the criteria in our average ifs here to account for that change. So the asterisk will represent any number of characters, and then next we need the question mark. So we can add a tilde followed by the question mark, and this is telling Excel to treat the next character that follows the tilde as normal text and not a wildcard character. 
And then after that, all we need is four more digits. So one, two, three, four more question marks, hit enter. And now we have corrected our formula. Finally, we have to understand the limitations of wildcard characters. And a general rule of thumb is that any function that often has this kind of syntax probably does not support them. So that syntax being any cell or array reference equals a wildcard character expression. So here I'm trying to write an if statement to say whether or not each movie is or is not a born movie. And you can see that it's not picking it up with the wildcard characters. So another example would be the filter function here where I'm trying to filter down the movies that are born movies. And again, we have that syntax of an array is equal to a wildcard character expression, and this returns an error. So fortunately, there is a very easy way around this, but that will be a topic for my next video. So that is the end of today's video. So please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel to see my next video on this topic and a lot more going forward. And as always, thanks for watching.